your boy chicken, I uh, stuck my head out and I actually started in arts and I studied Latin and ancient alchemy. And then uh, that kind of weirded me out. So I moved back to Toronto and studied geography. That took me to the Arctic, got to see some polar bears, northern lights, and dust. And, um, and that uh, put me on a plane to, climb, uh, to go to Europe and climb to 3,500 meters, digging holes looking for 2,000-year-old elephant shit. It's for real, so you, you can see it on CNN. Um, Anyway, uh, after that trip, you can imagine my drop in altitude as I came back uh, to sea level to start my PhD in contaminated soil and land remediation. Um, to be fair, it's what I want to do, because I think this, this, I mean, I don't just think, the soil is this totally amazing skin on the earth that keeps all terrestrial life going, and I think uh, it really deserves some of our attention and care. Um, but at the same time, I study dirt. Like, um, fowls, yeah, not even the good kind of, like, smutty. I, I study foul-smelling granular material from old industrial sites and uh, places that look kind of like Mordor. And so, with those kinds of images in mind, I think you can understand how my optimism starts to, to feel a, a bit weak some days, and all those other feelings of, like, futility and late nights in the lab and spending all these time with machines that are kind of the bane of your existence and yet maybe the only companionship you've had in several days. So like I come into the, into the lab in the morning and I'm like, uh, hey George, hey Mona, uh, hey Zazu, what's the morning report? Oh, well, um, Chugger over there in the corner took on uh, five liters of ethanol last night and uh, we thought he was just hung over but Turns out somebody mixed in some methanol and his detector's gone blind. Um, oh, and, uh, and Squeaky over there, uh, he started howling last night. Um, drama queen. Every time he wants attention, he just blows another gasket. Um, and then there's the usuals. There's, uh, there's uh, Perkin Elmer being a FUD. Uh, and... Uh, Dasher and Vixen, or swear they won't work till Christmas. <laughs> and thing about Bob, thing about Bob, that really important one, one, two, three, four, and five, they've all been playing hide and seek since the master students came around. Um, anyway, uh, Corinne, should you be getting back to your work? Uh, Bess needs resuscitation. So, uh, anyway, I work with Bess, she needs resuscitation. And, um, what her job is to do is to produce something called a chromatogram. And I don't know, I didn't actually see from backstage how many people are researchers and might know what a chromatogram is. But anyway, it comes from, chromatography comes from the Greek word uh, chroma, color, and it used to be used to separate dyes, and we've got some more advanced versions now. Um, but I just love this word because chromatography inspires so much colorful language. Um, on good days, Things look like coffee and caramel and maple syrup, grade A, and maple <laughs> syrup, grade B. And that, incidentally, is better kind. Uh, and on bad days, I think you can imagine how this wonderful rich palette of uh, yellow, black, and brown gets a little more foul. Um, suspect black, baby diaper brown, bladder infection. Anyway, that's just prep work. Then my samples go on to an instrument, uh, Vess, and uh, she produces another thing called a chromatogram. Same work concept, kind of a little bit different. Um, in this case, what Vess produces is something that looks a bit like a lie detector test. And so basically a chemical passes a detector and you get a blip, and you just get a bunch of blips. And uh, this, the pattern of these blips can tell you some really interesting things. Um, the problem is, a lot of the time you end up wishing there was a lie detector strapped to Bess because you spend your nights thinking, are you really there? Is that blip really there? Is that blip really not there? And at some point in the night, it turns into, am I really here? Am I really not here? Can I get out of here? So, uh, when it gets really bad, uh, you just kind of, you have to step back. And so I 
you know, I step back. And I look at my poor soil sitting in the fume hood, and I think about what a beautiful childhood it must have had, living out there in the sunshine, plants growing, everything like that. And, uh, and now it's there, in, wrapped in foil in a fume hood, and smelling awful, and life's gone, and I don't even want to hang out with it. <laughs> and I think, oh, no, 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 Corn, you got this backwards. He's got a bad. He's got a way worse than you. Um, so, we're going to be in this together. Uh, as long as, as he's there and doing his thing, being awful, uh, you're going you're gonna to keep working. So, uh, anyway, one night, I can't remember exactly which day it was, but maybe it was the time that we sieved 300 kilograms of diesel-soaked soil through a kitchen strainer. <laughs> Or uh, um, maybe I just huffed a few too many solvents that day. I, I don't know um, what exactly it was, but I, I turned to my soil and I said, um, Hey, uh, so, Smelly G, um, if you were to describe your life uh, and working with me, what would you say? And uh, he turned to me. He really turned to me and he said, he looked me straight in the eye and he said, Corin, well, you know, I guess I'd have to sing the blues. And so I'm sorry he can't be here today because uh, due to health and safety regulations of the venue. Um, but he asked me to try to communicate his, his song and I'm going to give it a go. But before I start, I need to say that I really don't have the right voice for this because um, it's really better in the authentic, like, old man, 70-year-old chain smoker uh, with a cancer death wish. That's the kind of voice that my soil has. And uh, it's kind of appropriate because uh, the compounds I study actually are the same things in cigarette, uh, cigarette smoke that cause cancer. Um, and the other thing I want to say is it's too bad you're not getting the authentic experience because he's also way better at uke. Anyway, without any uh, further ado, here we'll give it a go. They call me mud, they call me crud, say I couldn't even grow a spud. Oh boy, I've been down and dirty, but I'm trying to get clean. Aromatic toxins really got me down. Leftover tar from when they built this town. Oh hell, yeah, they left me dirty, but I'm trying to get clean. So I went to a doctor, tried to get some meds. She said, I'm just a PhD student, but yeah, I'll check your pets. And I've been down and dirty, but guess it's part of getting clean. Then she settled, said a lot of letters, H, P, L, C, G, S, M, N, Z. I didn't get her lingo, so just said, yeah, I'll take your test. And oh boy, she said, yeah, you're pretty dirty, so we'll do the full screen. And then she said, sad to tell you it just might be too late. You got cancer, your only chance is to remediate. Oh boy, I've been down and dirty, now it's die or get clean. So I took a treatment, compost pills, and forced air pumps. But then doctor said, oh no, your chromatogram has got new lumps. <laughs> oh boy, I've been down and dirty, and I don't even know what she means. So she called it stage four and said the lumps would spread. I'll leach even worse toxins into my watershed. Oh Lord, I've been down and dirty, but was trying to get clean. 
So now I'm stuck here with this curse Seems the treatment just might make me worse Oh boy, I've been down and dirty What's the point of getting clean? So doctor, doctor, will I live another day? Is it time they burn me and just cart me away? No, she said, bug up, you just got stuck halfway, oh boy, I've been down and dirty, how the hell is she still came? So we'll do another dose and write you up for peer review. I said, I'd like to keep my pants on, and she said, hey, me too. <laughs> Oh boy, I've been down and dirty, hope this doesn't get too mean But now I'm just sitting here, stinking news and oil Wish I could stop being dirt and start being soil Oh boy, I've been down and dirty, no one knows if I'll ever get